This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. Sounds like Tom Brady and Giselle are uh, calling her quits. They both hire divorce lawyers. Yeah, we heard rumors of this. People were talking about it a couple weeks ago, if not months ago. And uh, we still don't have actual confirmation. No. But a lot of big news yeah, like even Barstool's running the yeah. story now, and they'd avoid it if it wasn't true. That's true. Chicks in the Office did a story on it yesterday. The rumor is, I, I don't know how true this is either, but that uh, she was very upset that he went back to play this year. He's married to the game. Married, yeah. And, like, she's just worried about, you know... His brain? Yeah, you get hit the wrong way when yeah. there's a 350-pound truck driving at you mm. you know what i mean like some of the guys that are hitting him are not small guys they're the biggest humans in the world it and really they turn my, their bodies into machines it really blew my mind watching an nfl game this season and like really starting to realize how it seems like they're wearing no equipment anymore and i'm sure it's just advanced and it's smaller that's right yeah but it's pretty wild what does this mean for tom brady he's gonna eat a cheeseburger as soon as yeah. they sign those papers. This guy has been on a strict Giselle diet for decades. And it's worked for him. Oh, like, yeah. He looks completely different from when he was first drafted into the NFL. When he was eating cheeseburgers. Now, when he was eating, yeah, like excessive meat. Now, but look he at the, barely eats meat. The longevity of his career is so impressive that you you have to credit a good chunk of that to, mm. to diet so we looked up tom brady's diet and it's pretty fascinating insane yeah he wakes up his day starts at 6 a.m he makes sure to put 20 ounces of water with electrolytes in his body immediately so he's hydrated as soon as he wakes mm. up he then has a high calorie high fat high protein smoothie two hours later that's when he starts his daily training session 20 minutes in to his workout he will then drink even more water with electrolytes but he won't eat until the workout's over around 11 a.m then he'll have his quick and easy recovery drink which is one scoop of plant-based protein powder and almond milk this sounds very healthy well it, very... you know what it doesn't sound as skin and bones as i thought it would either like that's that's good he's out he's got a lot of fuel in there yep and then when he assembles his lunch i love that it says he assembles it you're right he definitely has somebody that's making everything for him. 100%. He said his lunch is mostly plants. 20% of the, the plate will have a healthy protein, like a piece of fish or really plain chicken, like nothing on his chicken. It's just like See, that, boiled or... That annoys me. You can't nothing. put a little like Frank's red hot sauce on your chicken. You can't I, put a little pepper. I doubt. I doubt he does. Mm. And then he said the rest of the plate is vegetables. So he's got a little piece of fish and the rest is veggies. And dark leafy greens. For the rest of the day, if he's snacking, it's nuts or seeds. Then he'll have two or three more protein shakes throughout the day, which probably keeps him nice and full. Yeah. And then a plant-packed dinner with a steaming cup of bone broth instead of, like, most people drink, like, a cup of tea. <laughs> or he an drinks, IPA. Or a couple Guinnesses. Yeah. No, he's drinking a steaming cup of bone broth, which I've heard has amazing benefits for the body. Huh. I've never gotten into the bone broth game, but you hear about it all the time. I make my soup with bone broth. You I think should, that's just yeah. what it is, right? You boil bones like yes. all night. Yeah. Yes, but it's just got lots of nutrients in it. And it's really healthy for your body. And just imagine, this is like kind of TMI, too much information. But imagine how regular Tom Brady is. That guy yeah, what? probably what do you mean? going to the bathroom. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good dump schedule There's for sure. There's nothing in that diet that would clog him up or mess with his schedule. Right. He probably, like, there's a time every day that he's like, yeah, eh. If uh, anyone wants the TB12 diet plan, I have it here because there's way more. He says things like, you want to leave the table feeling 75% full, take a multivitamin every day, try to always eat real food. I just think this is kind of an interesting uh, mm -hmm. guideline if you want to be more like Tom Brady. What does he call it? He has like a... TB12. No, no, but there's another name for it. He's not like a vegetarian. Oh, he's, he's... a pescatarian. No, he's not because he eats chicken. No, he's, it wasn't like com oh. commonarian. He it's calls just... it commonsensical. Commonsensical. That's, that's his it. diet. Yeah. Because back in like ancient Greece... Majority of people did eat plants like they'd have meat fish every once in a while, but it was mostly grapes and and from leaves. what I've seen with the pictures lot of abs Tell me something good.
good. My story today is a local story about an 86-year-old man named Henry Resta who's been running Five Peaks trail races for the past 15 years. Incredible. I know. This last Sunday... A day before his 86th birthday, so happy belated birthday to Henry, he raced for his last ever. Hmm. And uh, he... He's okay. He's okay. Oh, he just, he just retired like, oh, from it. Oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> he's okay. So he's been running for 45 years, and he's kind of become a bit of a local celebrity in the running community. Okay. And he was greeted with fans at the finish line this past Sunday and a cold beer. And his friends cheered him on while he climbed the podium one final time. So the guy who actually runs the Five Peaks Trail races always noticed that Henry would make it onto the podium when they'd announce the between 70 and 99 years old category. Yeah. So he's just kind of been a mentor and an inspiration to the person that runs this and all the people in the running community. So. Pretty amazing that he's been in the community for 40 plus years running and meeting friends and happy retirement. I'm sure people will see Henry out and about on running trails in St. Albert and Edmonton here and there. But that was his last ever of the Five Peaks Trail Races. Tell me something good. Uh, My story is about just kids being surrounded by people with foreign accents. So uh, a lot of people wondered why Canadians had a very strong vocabulary Hmm. and uh, this may have something to do with it as the more foreign accents kids are surrounded by the quicker their vocab will grow cool yeah so just uh, make sure your kids are hanging out with lots of different people Mm -hmm, I love that tell me something good Uh, we have a friend who apparently is a really good spray tanner I didn't know that you could be really good at that I Mm -hmm. just thought like you leave people tanned or you don't. I went to one of the step in spray tan booths mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, weird. Like I felt the wetness on the front, but not the back. And it just didn't spray my back at all. So I was half tan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's why like going to a person's house mm-hmm. that has one of those pop up booths or they come to your house. You can trust it. It's going to be way more even. This friend of ours was just interviewed recently with Sports Illustrated to potentially go on a photo shoot run with all the models and dish out spray tans if any of them needed it. That's sweet. I remember there was one woman that came over and did one of my spray tans Mm -hmm. and she got famous from Dragon's Den. Right. She was on Dragon's Den yeah, yeah. and then never ended up get, taking the deal. She just wanted the publicity on the show. And then she ended up going to Toronto and being Lady Gaga's personal spray tan. See, there you go. See? Another spray tan opportunity. <laughs> but how cool would it be to travel the world mm-hmm. for your job? For something that you love, that you're passionate about, that you're good at. So she didn't end up getting the gig uh, and was quite disappointed about it, which made us think, there's probably a lot of people that almost landed a really cool job, mm-hmm. but didn't. So if you have a story like that, of like, so close, this would have been what I was doing, but I didn't end up getting it. We once interviewed, you and I, as just a side hustle, we were going to keep doing this show, because we love it here. Mm-hmm. But we were going to, like, every third weekend, travel to a different American city, I think it was, is what we were interviewing for, with the Food Network. And do food reviews at all the best places that would have been the coolest job on the planet. Yeah, why didn't we get it? Well, I don't know. We must have. I think we wanted it too much. In the interview, they're like, they were a little over the top. They're like, why are you guys eating during this interview? (laughs) We're like, we're just trying to show you. (laughs) We're passionate. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, that that would have been ours, right? Maybe we didn't have enough sex appeal. Ah, yeah, you might not have. Hey. What? No, I meant you. No, look at me. talking about jobs you almost landed that yeah. would have been just so dope but you didn't and maybe it worked out for the best yes, right of course this text from brett says i interviewed to ride shotgun in a helicopter that monitored forest fires oh, would wow. have been a pretty cool job sadly mm-hmm. i didn't get it if you're texting in or contributing to our topics we'd love to get your name so we can, first of all, add it to our system so we know who you are next time you text in, or we can give you a shout out on the show. This one here says, I applied to work for a brewery. The job entailed running a social media account and representing them at beer fests and competitions. I would have been able to get as much beer that I could drink and could just come and go as I pleased. I didn't get it, and I'm still bitter. 
Oof. Ah, oh, that would be a cool gig. Yeah. So fun. This text says I interviewed to uh, work and feed penguins three times a day in an <gasps> aquarium. Oh, my gosh. I would have got to get in a wetsuit and go hang out with the penguins pretty much. Penguins are so fascinating. The more I learn about them. Mm-hmm. They're they're just incredible creatures. 780-784-7107, one of our regulars on the phone. Cooter, thanks for checking in. What uh, what job did you almost land? Hey, so it's, uh, it's really no secret uh, that I drive a tow truck, and a good uh, good friend of mine lives in Ontario and was one of the kind of higher-ups at one of the companies that was on the Heavy Rescue 401, that Discovery Channel show. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm pretending like I don't know what it's called. I PBR every episode. Every <laughs> Okay. Uh, and I actually went and, uh, you know, hung, hung around for a few days around the shop and checked out their equipment. But uh, it would have required to be in Ontario for, you know, months at a time and, you know, very little time back. And I have a very young family, so I uh, I did not seize the day. Oh, man. But uh, it, was, it was a hell of an opportunity. And I met some really, really interesting people with... Uh, with a really unique way of doing things. Plus, you s- I work on our highways. I'm yeah, sorry. that's yeah, true. yeah. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, you swear way too much for a television show, too. Yeah, that's true. Yes, and I'm concentrating so hard on not doing that. <laughs> yeah, I actually, this is like we usually will have Cooter on and we'll like edit it because he'll swear a lot, <laughs> and we're throwing yeah. him on live, and you can hear it in his voice. His like sentences are so slow. He's like, I got my, uh, uh, my smart watch telling me to slow down and breathe. It. He's I'm like having a sweating. Heart attack. Yeah. I'm a little nervous you here, too, good. as well. You did so good. It's, it's all going to come out at the end. Okay, well, I'm going to hang up on you right now, then. Yes. You have a great day. I love the show, guys. Thanks. Thanks Thank you buddy. so much. That was hilarious. Whew. His whole, like, cadence was different. <laughs> I now know some pretty cool people. <laughs> Uh, 780-784-7107. I was in grade 11 and interviewed for ch- a job at Chuck E. Cheese. I was pretty excited about the opportunity, but no, didn't get it. you don't want that job. Do you know how many germs you'd have on you? Yeah, that's true. I went to a birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese recently. No. <laughs> Never again. I was like, I don't even know if I would eat the pizza here. I'm just scared. Come on. Come it's on. not that bad. There's kids everywhere. I know. Every crevice of that place has a child with a runny nose. That's everywhere that kids go, though. And I don't Play frequent parks, those places. Water parks, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Five simple words, $1,000. It's Ryder and Lisa's 1K Wordplay. Oh, I love this game so much. We have Terry on the phone right now. First time getting through as caller seven. Feeling a bit nervous, Terry? Yes, quite nervous. Oh, you're going to crush it. Here's how the game works. You're going to pick a teammate, either Lisa or myself. They'll leave the room and they can't hear the answers that you give. Mm-hmm. Uh, whoever's left will give you five words. You tell us the first word that comes to mind for each. We'll invite your teammate back in, give them the same words. For everyone that matches 25 bucks, get them all $1,000, okay? Okay. Who's your teammate I- today? Because I find that Lisa does have really good words, I think I'd like to try to have Lisa give me the words, and I'll try and match you, Ryder. Perfect. Uh, so that here. means you chose me. Let's not give no. her all the compliments. No, this is the credit I deserve. I choose good words. Okay, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. All right, Terry. Okay. Let's wait for the door to close so he can't hear us anymore. The first word I'm going to give you mm-hmm. is queen. King. Bank. Bank, did you say? Yep, bank. Ooh. Uh, money. Pray. Pray, did you say? Yep. P-R-A-Y? P-R-A-Y, pray. Um, I guess I'll say God. Runway. Airplane. And the last word, Terry, frown. Frown. Yeah. Frown. We'll go up. Good answers. Come on in, Ryder. We're winning some money today. Terry, I liked the confidence. I know that you were a bit nervous, but I actually think you crushed it. So Thank now you. now you Thank can you. relax. It's out of your control. Yeah. So deep breath, okay? Whew. I'd be happy with 50 bucks. So Perfect. let's hope for that. Okay, let's hope for 50 here. Ryder, what's the first word that comes to mind when I say queen? That's a tough one. There's lots of answers coming to my mind here. Queen. King? That's correct. Yes! 
What were you going to say? Well, Elizabeth. Yeah, that's true. Uh, oh. Dead. Hey. Well. <laughs> Bank. Money. That's correct. Yes. Yes. Terry's got her 50 bucks. Now let's make it 75. <laughs> Pray. Pray with an A. Uh, religion? God. Uh, that was my other guess. You know what? It's okay. <laughs> She's got 50 bucks. We still have a chance to give her $100. Runway. Model? Airplane. Oh. See, I feel like that one was, it was either or, right? Yeah. Okay. I let's, didn't think of that. She's got her 50 bucks. <laughs> let's send her home with 75. Frown. Well, because she did Queen King, so frown. I'm going to go smile. That's correct. Yes. Woo! Good job, Terry. You picked up 75 bucks today with Ryder and Lisa's 1K wordplay. That's awesome. Thanks, Ryder. Yeah, thanks for playing. Great game. Yeah, great job. Next chance to play is tomorrow morning at 7.50. Good morning. Terror Tales. <laughs> oh, I love this segment. I don't know why, because I get so scared so easily. The story was submitted by listener Ada. Yes. I used to live in the creepiest old house. It was built in 1921 and just had weird things that shook down in it and weird things that the house even had, like intercoms in all the rooms, including the furnace room and the attic for some reason. There was a door under the stairs that we later found out was a tunnel from the house to the detached garage with two car doors on it. One in the front and one in the back. Hmm. And the basement had a door that when you closed it, you could literally hear nothing coming from that room. <sighs> Yikes. Of course, my mom was in the basement right across from this door, and it always... Sorry, of course, my room was in the basement right across from this door, and it always creeped me out. I would hear footsteps every night walking in the upstairs hallway all the time. And things used to always just kind of move around. One time we asked some family friends to house sit for us while on vacation. We were gone for a couple weeks. When we came home, the brothers ran out yelling at my parents that we'll never watch your house again. They took pictures of some of the things they experienced. They said that they would hear a man shouting, get out of this house. And doors would slam or swing open. They said they'd be in the kitchen and everything would be normal, and then they'd turn around and all the cupboards would be open, <gasps> and then slam close all at once. No. They also said that my teddy bears would fly at them when they would walk by my room. They had chairs pile up, and the lights would turn on and off. Okay, I've heard ghosts love to stack things on top of each other. Really? Yeah, they love to stack things, so the chair thing adds up. My dad brushed it off thinking we were they were just trying to prank us, but my mom was pretty curious. When she started looking into the house, we later found out that it was used for human trafficking. <gasps> That's why it had the tunnel and the it, the soundproof rooms and the intercoms. <gasps> the guy that built the house was arrested and then murdered for smuggling families and women from the border into Canada. After that, my dad would always say, "Well, at least the ghosts like us." Likes them because they never, you never, they never right. heard the voice saying get out. <gasps> Which didn't help me as a kid. I was so happy when we finally moved. That is very scary. Okay, Ada coming through with the terror tale content. Anybody else got goosebumps? Built in 1921. And like it all makes sense. It all does. the things, even the tunnels and the like garage door that just faced like the back. The they intercom. were doing some. Intercom in the attic? Doing some very sketchy things there, yeah. Whew. What a way to kick off this um, segment for October for Spooky Susan. So, yeah, if you have a story, please send it to us. We would love to hear from you. You can email it to Ryder at Play107.com. The Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. Play 107.